So my name is Susan Thomases, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communication at Landmark School. Hello, thanks for joining us. Um, so tonight is the kickoff to our 2020 Fall Parents' Days. Um, and typically, for those of you who, uh, for whom this is not your first year, uh, you would be invited to campus, you meet with your students' teachers and their advisor in person, you'd be watching a performing arts showcase and wandering around our gallery, um, looking at student art from the first part of the year. Um, you'd be meeting with other landmark families and you would hear Bob's semi-annual state of the school address, which he's gonna deliver tonight by way of this Zoom meeting. So you are welcome to ask questions after the presentation and I'll moderate those. Just put those questions in the chat um, if you would do me a favor and make sure that your microphones are all muted right now. Um, we will be recording this session. So if you miss anything or you need to step away or you're having technical problems, know that you'll, you'll be able to review the, the recording again. And that will be in, um, in the Friday parent newsletter. And, uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, obviously this is a very different way of meeting and how I wish I could be meeting with you in person one-on-one -on -one as I see you on campus or in a group meeting in our wrestling room, perhaps with a snack and a glass of wine in our hands so I could wander around and say hi to everybody. Uh, but here we are, short of that, we are in many different locations tonight and we're on Zoom. And even though our year is well underway because we are just into week 13, which is amazing to me, um, I want to welcome each of you to Landmark School for our 50th year. So now we are able to say Landmark is 49 years old as we experience our 50th year as a school. Um, and in full disclosure, as some of you know, this is also my 50th year with Landmark School, which is hard to believe. It seems like a blink. At any rate, uh, what an experience this year has been. Um, obviously, uh, this year has felt and presented quite differently than any other in our 50th year history as we have indeed been confronted by a confluence of actualities and challenges due to COVID-19 and the visible and re real experience of racism and injustice in our country that our kids have felt and our faculty have felt and you have all felt. Always, and now within this environment, I always feel excited about the opening of our school year. And I hold tremendous respect for Landmark's administration faculty and staff, and all of you, our families, and I gained so much inspiration from this community. I think that's why many of us have been here for so long. We get so much inspiration from what takes place here and from being community with all of you. Together, we have taken on COVID-19 personally and professionally, and we're facing this period of reckoning. These realities have affected the entire world, including us, which has in many ways actually intensified our unity of purpose, focused our focus on our common mission. Our unity of purpose is always focused on our common mission to make a difference for our students and for each other and in the broader world. It all comes together. So the vision that holds us together at Landmark and the work we do are always driven by Landmark's mission, which I repeat when we come together every year. Landmark's mission is to enable and empower students with language-based learning disabilities to reach their educational and social potential through an exemplary school program complemented by outreach and training, research, and assessment. Everything we do at Landmark emanates from that mission statement, especially our diagnostic prescriptive, individualized, customized educational model that meets each student where they are in the learning process through one-to-one -one tutorials, skills-based classrooms, and curriculum. That's the essence of what we do and who we are. This is a unique model and unique program. It's solid. It's been evolving for 50 years based on what we've experienced and learned. So we're always refining. And yes, it really is unique. And this uniqueness made a big difference this year in the COVID environment as we've continued to strive as an institution to provide the best 
possible programs on campus, online, and in hybrid models. Something different, but the same quality expectation in the different models. So as I have often stated, in my mind at least, Landmark is a mission with a school at its core. And outreach and training, and online programs, and research, and advocacy, and collaborations, and partnerships working to create greater awareness and a broader impact for students with language-based learning disabilities. It's a mission focused primarily on our own students, but also for those well beyond our campuses who will never ever get to Landmark. Never has this been more true than since March, 2020, when our mission and our programs had to be fulfilled and provided in different ways than ever before to even our own students. We couldn't provide the programs we were accustomed to providing to all of our students. So it had to change and everybody dove in and made a difference in the way that we were presenting even to our own students. And we opened this year on campus, we got halfway through the summer and we said, we will open on campus. How are we gonna do that? And we did with 165 students on our elementary middle school campus and 274 students in our high school. We were actually somewhat amazed that our enrollment numbers were so strong during this year and in this environment. And I wanna say congratulations to our admission department for all of the incredible work they did to make this happen. And thank you to our families. The high school and the elementary middle school campuses have shown tremendous flexibility, creativity and cooperation, allowing us to accept our students into the multiple program models and niches that we have. This year, obviously, including on campus, hybrid and remote. So thank you to all the people on the campuses as well. And to make Landmark work this year, for our 439 students, we have 319 employees school-wide. That's both campuses and all departments. Ranging in Landmark experience from one to 50 years, and everything in between. So we are truly intergenerational here at Landmark. We have about 120 people who've been here at least 15 years and a whole big group of people who've been here 20 years, 30 years, 40 years and more, which is exciting to see the intergenerational work that's going on. Landmark's very strong and experienced management and emergency response team met multiple times every week actually five times a week from mid-March through September. And they continue to do heroic work, researching, analyzing, tracking the questions, seeking the answers and working exhausting and emotional hours to prepare Landmark for our fall opening and now daily programs in any of our three modes. The vigilance hasn't stopped in terms of health and safety. Because of their work and the dedication of the faculty, we are where we are, which we never really would have anticipated in mid-August that we get to Thanksgiving break and still be fully on campus. So we're very, very grateful for that. I wanna thank our parents association, Angela Timponi and Robert Gowans for heading that and the work they continue to do. I wanna thank our board of trustees. Tilo Hankies is our board chair. He took over those reins from Maura James, who was a longtime and successful chair. And our executive committee, our full board um, uh, of the of trustees have been incredibly involved, invested, and supportive during these times. They always are, but especially during these times. To all of our families, you too have continued to take a leap of faith that Landmark's educational model is appropriate for the students that you have sent us. And you've been trusting that we've created and implemented the protocols for health and safety on campus this year. I've often mentioned the value proposition that I think differentiates Landmark, our well-defined student profile, our customized one-to-one -one model, tutorial model, our academic advisor system, individualized scheduling for every student, skills-based class structure, et cetera. These are designed on what I refer to as a diagnostic prescriptive medical model. And they provide for us a maximum opportunity within an educational environment to meet all of our students where they are and to create success. 
And I want to repeat that. This model provides for us the maximum opportunity within an educational environment to meet all of our students where they are and to create success. Where they are in the learning process, in their social emotional development, and in their understanding of the broader world as well. This model creates a clear advantage and value proposition for our students in our present environment, now more than ever. Earmark's model differentiates us. So from day one, when the tutorial was always with us and the neuroscience was understood, to landmark at 50 and to landmark well into the future, that individualized and customized model to meet students with language-based learning disabilities where they are is the value proposition of this institution. It's what we do, it's why we do it, and it's how we do it. So as stated, COVID-19 has not been the only challenge that's faced us as individuals and as institutions uh, that we have to highlight this past year. We've also been in a overdue period of reckoning and outrage against systemic racism and injustice. And it's throughout our country. And we've been called to really deeply examine our own culture in our community at Landmark. And we've done that and we continue to do that. While our community is strong, people are invested in each other's well-being and inclusion. And everybody on our campuses is encouraged to speak with their own voices and to self-advocate. We are not perfect. And there is more that we must do. Our job is to make a difference. Certainly and obviously for our students and their learning needs but also in the big picture of teaching about, honoring, and supporting human rights. This is in no way a political statement. This is an obligation within which we are simply called to love our neighbors as ourselves and create a community and environment to this end. I have always been very personally moved by the life of Nelson Mandela. He made a difference. Some of you probably know Mandela was in a prison cell for over 27 years for fighting against the horrific practice of apartheid in South Africa. Toward the end of that time, he was known to have said that his imprisonment was the best thing that ever happened to me. So one could roll one's eyes at that statement and ask why he said, because it's changing the world, isn't it? And it did, apartheid ended. And Nelson Mandela became the first democratically elected president of South Africa in 1994. Landmark schools work is changing students' lives every day. And Landmark, the mission, is trying to change the world of education to make it equitable for all learners, all learners. We can also together, as a community, make a difference regarding equity, racial justice, and human rights. While we are not in control of so very much, this does not mean we are out of control and we can and we will continue to determine who we are and what we need to do as a community. So that's a big part of our emotional and intellectual work this year. So moving forward, we are focused on four priority agenda and action items and goals within our strategic plan. The very first priority is to nurture our human capital. That means our faculty, our staff, and our students. That means health and safety, physical and emotional health and safety. I need you to know that no decisions are made at Landmark without health and safety as a priority. The management team, the emergency response team, the board, faculty will continue with vigilance and best practices as we go forward but health and safety is critical as part of our nurturing of human capital. Part of that also is building a bigger endowment for salaries and financial aid. We need to help more students get to Landmark. We need to help our faculty grow through better salaries. Part of that nurturing of human capital is diversity and, and inclusion initiatives. We have teams on both campuses. They're working together as a whole school. And we're going to be working again with the National Association of Independent Schools on this survey um, that will help us develop strategies going forward in this world of diversity and inclusion. Um, and we're deepening our own commitment 
to diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. So that's priority one, nurturing our human capital. Priority two is advancing language-based learning disabilities, education, and science. Not enough students around the world in our country are getting help. So our outreach programs that are working with about 5,000 teachers a year through contracts, on-site programs in the summertime, uh, online programs, our commitment to research, those things must continue to grow because this education and science must expand into more systems to help more kids. A third priority is fostering the financial sustainability of our organization. That means making sure we're always running controlled and tight budgets, which we do fundraising and building those endowments that I already mentioned. Our fourth priority is enhancing our campus development. We have 35 buildings and a lot of acres. Uh, there are improvements to be made every year. There are additions we'd like to add to our campus, um, both campuses that would make it better if we could do that. So enhancing campus development is priority number four. And also as a joint priority at Landmark, a continuing common concern across all educational platforms is the increased levels of anxiety appearing in students of all ages from kindergarten on up. I talk about this with the heads of other schools. I talk about this at conferences that we attend. Um, it's just across the age groups. This is a discussion point in all private and public schools, as I said, and because of COVID-19 and some of the visceral examples of racism and violence that we've seen on the TV screens and everywhere, We've even seen increased reason to be concerned about the social emotional health of our students. This too is a part of our work to create the safety, the security, the confidence and the community connections that help to minimize anxiety and loneliness in all of our students and all students everywhere as much as we can. All of our programs and direct face-to-face -face, or this year mask-to-mask -mask communication with students helps and we must teach and model good communication, help build confidence, help build self-advocacy skills for every student to overcome their anxiety um, as they go through life. The more we see kids grow, the more we see their self-advocacy coming out, we, the more we see their confidence, the more they learn and the more they help each other. So that's a major focus for us and a major priority. So seeing the enthusiasm and the excitement exuding from both the students and our families as they returned to Landmark at the beginning of the year was an incredibly emotional reward for all of the effort and every dollar that went into preparing for the fall. And it was a total validation of the impact of us all coming together in person. It made a difference and it continues to make a difference. I mentioned that we have 319 employees. This year we have 439 families. As I speak of the landmark culture, each person at our school is making the school work in their specialized way, changing student lives, engaging with parents, supporting each other, assuring health and safety, fulfilling the mission, maintaining facilities and on and on. We will continue to do this every day. And we will also continue to maintain the highest vigilance, research and planning related to COVID-19 and the health and safety of our community for the remainder of this year and way beyond. You, our families, are a big and critical part of the Landmark family. And you are helping to carry on this culture, building it and assuring its future. I thank you. I thank you for being part of Landmark and I thank you for being with us tonight and making this so. So with that, I'll take a deep breath and if there are some questions that have come in on the chat, I'm happy to discuss those. Um, and I still wish that we were in the wrestling room and I could walk around and talk to you in person face to face, but that will happen again. I promise you that. Bravo. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. I think, see now I don't hear it anymore. There was a, a distracting noise that we were hearing, unfortunately throughout your presentation. And I think it might've been, uh, Maybe you were pressing on one of the keys. On oh, your maybe it was me. I was it's just trying okay. to keep everybody's attention. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't see um, any questions coming in through the chat. So if people have questions, uh, okay, where's the update on boarding? Ah, that's coming very soon. 
Um, I wish I had that tonight, but our team has been working almost daily for a bunch of weeks to assess what we're going to do with residential for this year. Um, and I will probably get out a message to you all right after Thanksgiving about that. We're going to be meeting right through the break. Lots of assessment on um, health and safety factors, what's happening with spikes in our area, things of that sort. So uh, we're working um, feverishly on that and you'll hear about that very, very soon. I promise. Uh, somebody's making a comment. It says it's definitely better in person, but the long commute is very, very hard. Yes. Uh, yep. There was a case at EMS today, a case of COVID-19 mm -hmm. on the EMS campus today. Uh, they're asking about an update, Bob. Sure. Uh, we learned about it this morning. A family contacted our health center. And all I can say is that from what we hear, the family is doing well. Um, but also if we were to create a scenario that would give us little anxiety about any concerns on campus, it was this scenario. I can't talk about personal aspects of it, um, but this was completely family contained off campus um, and um, there was really no exposure on our campus at all. So I feel really good about that. And we're just gonna now do some updates and keep following the family and making sure they're okay. Um, but there's really, there was not um, any risk or contact tracing to do just the way the scenario unfolded um, and the way that the family handled it um, by quarantining on their own early on, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we feel fortunate about it and everybody should feel rested. Everybody should feel um, confident that this is not an impact on our campuses. Uh, any plans for um, senior activities, Bob? Um, the high school is working on that, yes, some virtual senior activities and hopefully some as we get into the spring, face-to-face um, -face activities as well. Um, we um, certainly had broken hearts last year when we couldn't do things and the uh, car parade we had for graduation was an extremely emotional and uplifting experience, but we're hoping to have senior activities as we go through the year, even community activities online before we can come together um, in different ways and um, then start honoring the seniors for sure. So there is a question about graduation. It says any thoughts on graduation, which it sounds like not quite yet. Um, yes, we will have one. <laughs> I wish I could be specific. It's too early to tell yet what's gonna happen, uh, whether we can come together even on a football field or what we can do, but we will do everything we can to have a ceremony um, and to honor these students and the work they've put in and honor your families uh, in this graduation. So again, we'll keep you updated, but um, too early to predict what that will exactly look like at this point. Okay. Um, any ideas or plans for after school help? After school help as an academic help or? It doesn't really um, specify uh, any ideas or plans for after school help for students. So I'm guessing academic. <clears throat> um, I can't, I don't, can't speak to that directly. I would say, um, if students do feel like they need more help, I would go directly to the academic advisor and we will create something. Um, we can make that happen. Um, so if the students are home and they've been fully remote or they're driving long distances and are exhausted or they're, or they're in a hybrid model, um, if they need something, reach out to the academic advisor and we'll respond individually. Okay. <clears throat> How about sports in, for the springtime? We're hoping. Um, you know, we're part of the Eastern Independent League um, and all sports for the EIL have been canceled through the winter. We are hoping that we can get back to sports in the spring. Um, that's the goal. And so we're constantly, I'm meeting with the heads and the uh, athletic directors of the EIL uh, on a regular basis. And um, that's the goal for all of our schools is to try to get back to sports in the spring. Um, no determination yet, of course, but that's the goal. Okay. Um, as part of the boarding reopening or in general, is Landmark considering doing its own testing? We are not considering doing our own testing at the present time. Um, if we open residential, we may get to that. Um, again, I meet with about 25 other heads. There's mixed reactions to testing. Some are doing it constantly, some aren't. Um, so we're doing, as you know, the MyMedBot more symptom management and tracing. Um, if we are going to open residential, the second part of that conversation is where do we go with testing? 
So we won't move into testing if we remain all day students. If we move into residential, we'll definitely consider that and take a look and see how that will help us. And there's a, another question from somebody else about um, if we were to do COVID testing, uh, would we consider a partnership with another institution like the Broad? Absolutely. They'd be the organization, most likely. Okay. So here's sort of a specific question, but it might it might actually pertain to several of you. Um, can the students keep keep some belongings at school? This person's daughter's backpack is 50 pounds and she takes ah. the train and she carries it. Ah. So I don't know if you want to, I think Bill Barrett is on this call somewhere if he wants to unmute and chime in. Otherwise, Bob, you can take it. <laughs> Sylvie, thank you. You know, I'm not surprised that a backpack is 50 pounds. I watched the kids going up and down the hill and talk about training. That's the landmark aerobic Pilates fitness training like I've never seen. Every year the backpacks are bigger when they're full. I don't know how they do it. Um, if a student needs to leave something here um, and is um, commuting like that, we will certainly make an arrangement, whether it's in the administration building right here. A lot of kids get picked up um, in front of this building. We can create a space um, that's safe. We'll do whatever it takes to help a student who's got that situation. Okay. Um, what about more support for social activities? Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, again, trying to do groups online, um, trying to do um, more social things with breaks and stuff on campus itself. Um, but that's one of the big um, painful experiences right now of the social needs of kids and not being able to get kids together um, in ways that are helpful. So I know that um, the counseling teams and the um, folks on campus are talking about this constantly. A lot of what they talk about is getting students together virtually um, in social ways. Um, and again, kids are commuting so many different places. Uh, we don't have after school programs, but that's on the list. And um, we, as I mentioned in my talk, the social emotional side of our kids is critical. And we're just seeing so many kids not getting what they need socially and emotionally right now. And we'd love to expand that if we can find safe and healthy ways to do it. Okay. Uh, do, we, do you think there's gonna be a college fair this spring, even if it's virtual? I hope so. Um, a college fair would be a great thing to have happen and virtually we definitely could do that. Um, there's been some turnover in the counseling department, I think you know, some of you know, um, but the folks up there are working feverishly right now with the seniors to get them into colleges. And that's really an exciting time and recommendations and applications are flying. And then for the sophomores and juniors to be thinking about the future, um, having contact with colleges is important. And there have been a tremendous amount of college visits virtually um, almost every day, colleges from all over the country. Um, and to organize a fair is something I think we could do virtually. Okay. Uh, this, somebody's making a comment that they'd like to see some form of afternoon activities. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's, it's difficult to make happen right now um, for a lot of reasons. And mostly it's the health and safety piece and how it gets done. Um, but again, it's, it's on the radar screen and being discussed constantly. Okay. Um, Here's not so much, well, this is sort of a question. A study just came out about uh, the fact that virtual learning uh, was not, is not productive. It was not a positive article. Wondering if you've seen that or have any thoughts on that. I would agree that uh, virtual learning is not nearly as productive uh, or effective as in-person um, in face-to-face. I think for many, many, many kids, it's better than nothing. And I think for some kids, it's a real struggle because of executive function issues, things of that sort. And that's why we wanted so desperately to be on campus in the fall. Um, we got to a point of not knowing if we could open because of all the unknowns, the variables. And then we just put out a mandate to our teams, plan to open, let's do what it's gonna take. And whether it's ventilation or ion filters or the way that we set up our programs or um, again, using space in a whole different way because we can't use tutorial centers, people next to each other, things of that sort. Um, 
So getting on campus was critical to us because of that point. I don't think that um, virtual learning is uh, nearly as effective for students in general and certainly for kids who struggle with attention issues, executive function issues. When we've talked to our students, they tell us it's better to be online virtually than not be involved, um, but it's not as good as being in person. So um, I think we're gonna see a lot of research coming out of this. Um, some of the predictors are also that colleges, for example, will go more online. Um, I don't know how that's gonna be effective um, in the future for students, even of the college age, um, but there's a lot of research coming out of this and we'll, we'll see where that goes. But I'm a believer in face-to-face -face education as much as we can do it as well. Okay. Um, there were some rumors about Landmark going 100% remote after Thanksgiving until New Year or beyond. Is that true? No. Um, the way it's set up right now is that the week after Thanksgiving will be fully remote at the high school and then back on campus for two weeks. And that's simply to give some time for families. We know there's going to be some travel. Um, we want to make sure that we have all the health protocols in place and that when we get back on campus, it's as safe as it was when we left. Um, so the first week after Thanksgiving, uh, we will be um, fully remote. And then for the two weeks prior to the uh, winter break, we'll be back on campus. Okay. Somebody has a suggestion about um, maximizing social time for students. They say, why not increase the lunch period by 10 to 15 minutes, as this is the only social time that the kids get. The lunch period is short, especially when kids have to walk from down below and get to lunch late. Yeah. So a scheduling question. Yeah, that's a, that's a, good, a good question. Um, one of the problems we have is the number of people that we can have in the dining room or in the tents at any given time. And so we're staggering more lunches than usual and that's why they're a little brief. Um, and it's because we can only have a certain number of people um, in the spaces. As you know, it's all plexiglassed and divided. And uh, even in the tent, it's plexiglassed and divided. And as winter comes, we're actually gonna be moving the outside tent dining down into the gym. And there's great ventilation down there. We're setting it up. We're bringing down freezers and refrigerators. So half of the gym floor is gonna be a lunchroom, dining room. Um, and part of the problem is numbers that we can have at any given time and therefore how do we schedule it out so everybody can get through? Um, but I would love to make it longer if we can, and we can explore that in the schedule. Okay. Um, there is another question here. Would it, again, having to do with afternoon activities, would it be possible to have weekly afternoon yoga or other workout classes like they had at Saturday school? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we have had some outdoor yoga during the day. Um, I think we could begin to integrate some things like that for sure. Um, and I know that the high school team, um, if anybody's on, they can speak to it. It's, it's a constant conversation of what can we begin to do. Part of the problem is with the coldness, a lot of it's gonna have to be indoors um, as we move into the winter months and how we navigate that and make that safe is, is always part of the question. Okay. Um, any thoughts about transitioning out of the chapter 766 funding model? That's a big one. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, we are not in a place as an institution where we're talking about going fully private. Um, and there's so many reasons for that. Um, there are an awful lot of students who are here um, because they have received funding and they probably couldn't be here and we might have to triple their financial aid budgets, our financial aid budget, in order to get those same students here with financial aid. Um, so that does come up on a regular basis. We've been an approved school since the 1970s when chapter, 760s, chapter 766 was passed in Massachusetts. We became one of the first approved school. That became the foundation for the federal law, 94142, and then it moved into what the Department of Ed is now. Um, and so we've been approved for a very long time. Um, it has its great challenges, but it also has great opportunities for kids who, can, who to be at the school. Um, so it's a discussion. It's not an active one at the moment, but I'm sure it's going to come up again uh, in the not too distant future. But um, we, um, 
we would be hard pressed, I think, to go fully private and have the resources to help as many kids as can be here now um, based on the funding that they're able to receive. Okay, um, a question about after school activities uh, being offered remotely, would we consider doing that? It's the same person that was asking about yoga. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, and it's a good question. I think the high school team can take a look at that. Um, some after school group activities certainly can be done um, and, and a good suggestion. So um, we'll bring it up with the high school team for sure. I know they're talking about it and I'm not sure exactly where they stand at the moment with that. Um, so there are, it looks like there are no more questions, but there have been some really nice comments coming through. Um, so thank you for everybody who's made these lovely uh, comments and given positive feedback, which feels really great. I'll read a couple of them. Our daughter is fully remote and is very pleased with the remote program. We feel like it's going well and some reasons why we believe it works so well. Maybe that the school has um, very small class sizes and highly interactive teachers and education model. Um, Let's see what else. Continuously impressed with how caring and thorough Landmark is with regard to the kids, staff, and families. You're truly amazing. So greatly appreciated. Thank you, for, thank you for all that you do every day. It doesn't go unnoticed. There's some really nice ones. Thank you for everybody. Let's see. It looks like there's another one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just very positive. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much for those. And, and just so you know, as we look into the future, somebody asked me, um, will Landmark just remain as a day school forever? And the answer to that is absolutely not. <laughs> we will we will morph into fully remote as soon as we uh, fully uh, residential as soon as we can um, on the high school campus. Um, we want to have that residential program, and so the high school will be day and residential as soon as we know that's safe. And certainly, it's planning for next year um, as we go forward and well into the future. We are not going to just be a day school. Um, it, at our high school level. So um, that that will be back in place as soon as we know we can do it well and safely. Any other questions? No? Okay. Okay. Thank well, you just, guys. Just pretend that we're all walking out of the gymnasium and uh, we're gonna walk around the campus now and we're gonna see some of the kids who are still on campus and that's the feeling that I want you to have. So. Um, thank you for being on this tonight and I look forward to the next time we can see each other in person.